If you like what you're hearing on the phillytech.org netcast network, please consider supporting the network with a small monthly donation via patreon.com slash phillytechorg. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash p-h-i-l-l-y-t-e-c-h-o-r-g. And thank you in advance. You're listening to the Nutrition Philly Podcast your host, Brittany Kennedy, on the phillytech.org netcast network. All right. Live. So. <laughs> Perfect. I'll have to at the beginning a little bit, but we're live. Okay. All right, welcome everyone to the Nutrition Philly podcast. This is episode number two. Episode number one was Seth, you know, interviewing me and kind of giving you an idea of what we're going to do on the podcast and kind of gave you an idea of who I was going to bring on and what we're going to talk about. Um, but today, I'm really excited. I have my girl Chelsea here with us. Um, Chelsea is the owner of Figo. Um, she's an awesome girl. She's a personal trainer, Italian chef kicks total butt. Um, but she's here to answer a couple questions I had about just like healthy cooking and just like easy fitness tips that I think a lot of us kind of think about a lot but never really get the full scoop on. Um, so say hello Chelsea. Give us an idea of what you do. Tell us about Figo. Hey guys. Uh, my name is Chelsea Pagana. My nickname is Peanut. Um, and I started Figo a couple years ago. I think it's been about three years. Um, with the intention to inspire people to live a healthy lifestyle um, in regards to food and fitness. I've been a personal trainer now for, I think, about nine years. It's going on. Started back nice. in the days of Penn State, where actually I met Brittany. Yeah, side note, Chelsea and I met at Penn State. We are. We are. Yeah. We are. So that's where we met. Um, so backstory, both met there, kind of. I was a nutrition science major. Chelsea was getting her fitness on, and that's where we met. So. Yeah, um, we probably did meet at like a like a drinking party, I would say. But we're big kids now, and we're all grown up, and we don't do that anymore. So no, never, never, ever. <laughs> um, so anywho, so I uh, you know started out with some personal training and uh, group fitness instruction, majored in exercise science. Uh, I was on the Penn State boxing team in college, so I have a you know athletic background. Um, and then I decided to go to culinary school. I lived abroad in Italy for about six months nice. and uh, studied Italian food. It was life changing. Um, I just really saw the way that Italians live their lives every day. They live, you know, they move, they're active, uh, they're stress free. I think they probably sleep a hell of a lot more than we do, probably because they don't work quite as much. Uh, that's that's what I got from being Amen to that. Yeah. <laughs> We're overworked here in the States. Uh, but, uh, and, and they just eat really fresh. Um, you know, they do eat, you know, carbohydrates and, you know, pasta every once in a while, but everything's portioned out. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we lack here in the States. So, um, just kind of trying to bring a lifestyle perspective, uh, you know, back to the United States here and, you know, connecting with you, Brittany has just been an amazing journey thus far and, uh, let's change the world. Boom. Woo yeah. So the big thing I love about Chelsea is that she's, uh, super peppy and she's really down to earth with a lot of her clients, as you can see. Um, she doesn't take herself too seriously, which I feel like a lot of people in the health and wellness industry take themselves a little too seriously. And uh, just have to bring yourself back down to your client's level, you know, because that's who you're working for, and that's who you're trying to help. I, I really, truly believe, you know, you have these extremists out there, especially in the workout world and nutrition. I'm sure you see it too. Yeah. That, you know, they're making uh, chicken, which was something maybe uh, we might talk about later. They're making, yeah, we're talking about it. Uh, you know, chicken that's dry, absolutely disgusting. They're eating that for multiple, multiple meals a day. They're spending, you know, three, four hours in the gym. Guess what? Ain't nobody got time for that. So we're going <laughs> to how to uh, – how to kick it and be efficient with your time and just enjoy life. Yeah, and, and nobody got time for that. So, you know, I what I really love about Chelsea too is that she approaches her business and her clients in a lot of the same way that I do, which is what I love about you, Chelsea, is that 
she just very realistic, you know, and just looks at things the way that the world really is, and doesn't try, like you said, to be that like crazy nut job who goes to the gym like seven days a week and is there for three or four hours at a time. Because uh, that's the biggest thing my clients say to me when I first talk to them. They're like, "Do I have to have? Is there a workout component to this? <laughs> Do I have to work out?" I'm like, "Well, no, you don't have to, but it's probably good to be a little bit active." Um, which is forever. Start working out, dude. Start working out. Yeah. You don't have to be crazy, but just get moving. Yep. Yeah. So, so I sent Chelsea a couple questions because obviously she's the uh, the chef here, not me. And if anyone knows me or eats at my house, they know that I don't cook very well. So that's why I send them all to Chelsea. I say, watch her videos. She's a girl. <laughs> so my first question that I had for Chelsea uh, which a lot of people ask all the time, and like you were saying with your chicken, is that people say that healthy cooking does not taste good all the time. They say, oh, I can't. Yeah, they're 100% wrong. So they're like, oh, I, I can't eat healthy because it doesn't taste good. So my question to you to help anyone watching is if you could pick three things to season any dish with or the three things that you find that you season most dishes with, mm -hmm. What would it be? Or how, how can we cook in a healthy way that doesn't taste like crap? All right. So maybe instead of giving you like three seasonings, can I give you mm -hmm. maybe three methods uh, that I think yeah. that can taste good? Yeah. Okay. So the that first one, absolutely yes, is with seasoning your food. Um, you know, we don't have to get crazy with fats and whatnot, even though don't be afraid of fat. Mm -hmm. Extra olive oil, coconut oil, those things have amazing benefits for your heart and for your skin, and they're very, very satiating. So don't necessarily be afraid of them. Uh, but, you know, you can use fresh herbs. You can use, um, you know, some seasonings, a little spice, uh, you know, to help even your food. Garlic is a really good one, also good for the heart. Um, so I'm a big fan of marinating food ahead of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, and then cooking it, you know, whether it be roasting, grilling, whatever. Uh, but I always season things ahead of time. So when you say marinating, because I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm not good at this. So what's your ideal amount of time to marinate a meat? Are you hmm. thinking like overnight or like two hours? All right, Just not two. necessarily overnight. I mean, I think that's something our brains can't even process ahead of time. If you think yeah. about it early the day, you know, the night before, mm -hmm. go for it. You're a rock star, good work. But honestly, the minimal you need is just 20 minutes to marinate. Of course, it's, really? of course, it's going to taste good if you marinate it a little bit longer, like your chicken and, you know, you leave it in the fridge for a few hours. But if you really are actually limited for time before mm -hmm. you put it on the grill, honestly, 20 minutes uh, should, should be kind of that quick, uh, you know, minimalistic trick, I guess. Nice. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because that's that's the also the big thing, and I'm glad you brought that up, is that people don't think about it, right? So, like, I have clients all the time who are like, I came home, and my chicken was frozen, and I had to eat a can of tuna. Yep. <laughs> I'm like, oh. So true. But uh, right yeah. now, actually, I am dethawing. Is that a word? Dethaw? Yeah. Not thaw. Yeah. Unfreeze. Unfreeze. Yeah. Um, no, I'm thawing, not dethaw. Um, some uh, chicken thighs, and uh, they're kind of. As some people, you know, they say that you should keep them, you know, in the refrigerator for a day to to thaw out. Mm -hmm. um, we'll usually put it in the sink with some kind of like mediocre, lukewarm water, and mm -hmm. it's good by dinner time. Um, okay. So you you do have to think ahead in that sense if you're coming from a freezer standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, and you know exactly like you said, it is challenging, but. If you just at least have 20 minutes, you are going to get some decent flavor in your food. Maybe not as much for, you know, that couple hours or overnight, but it will do the trick, you know, very well as, as well. So. Gotcha. Cool. Okay. So, so then to wrap that up, to summarize, best ways to make your food not taste like crap. Yep. We'll season it. Yep. Marinate it. And... Uh. Well, it was more about, I guess, uh, just the seasoning in general. The next one I yeah. was going to go with is the cooking process that you use. Go um, so, uh, obviously, throw in your food on the grill. You're going to get that amazing kind of like charcoal taste to your food. Um, okay. You know, so, you know, like we said, marinating it and then throwing it on the grill. Uh, I love that taste, especially in the summertime, even through into the fall. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, instead of, say, like, boiling food or, you know, what, or steaming, mm -hmm. you know, throw like some vegetables on the grill tastes 
so good and you still get the health benefits. Um, I think the last thing that I was going to say is uh, staying in season with your okay. So if you're talking about produce, like fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, right now root vegetables are banging. Uh, you know, butternut squash, parsnips, turnips. Um, what else are we having right now? Some zucchini. Mm -hmm. uh, green beans are still good right now. Um, buying foods when they're in season, you're going to get that full flavor uh, instead of buying it out of season. For instance, a lot of people know that asparagus is extremely healthy. Um, people that are health nuts are eating asparagus all year round when in actuality, mm -hmm. you'd really only be eating asparagus in the springtime, um, you know, stopping at about June because that's its prime time season and you're going to get the best flavor from an asparagus. Oh. So. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because a lot of times, you're right, people will pick foods that are out of season, and then they're like, oh, this tastes horrible. Like, the big thing is fruit, right? Because yep. in the winter, fruit's so hard to find, and if you do find it, you don't know where it's coming from. Right. So, yeah. So I think staying in season is really good. And speaking of seasonal vegetables, your recipe for the butternut squash soup, the jalapeno, the jalapeno, whatever that you call it, yeah. uh, my clients love it. Banger. I had like two people make it, and I had another girl this morning. She was like, "So I went out and got your girl Chelsea's stuff to make that soup," and she was like, "I can't wait." Yeah, so that soup is yeah. so nice for fall, and with all the vegetables, all the squash in it, um, mm -hmm. it's really fibrous. And it was so funny. We were eating it, and we were actually sipping uh, a little cocktail with it as well. Mm -hmm. um, my apple cider sangria, another recipe on my videos, yep. and my brother had mentioned. I mean, we just put a little part of Mijano cheese on it. And mm -hmm. then some, you know, roasted nuts. And he had said, he's like, I swear it feels like it's expanding in my stomach because of how fibrous, uh, you know, the fruit is. And, and you know, it's in season and it's ripe yeah. and good stuff. So, you know, cooking in season is, is huge. And, you know, choose some good, uh, healthy, fibrous produce. Yeah. And just for anyone who's watching slash listening, you know, the more fiber that's in your food, the fuller you're going to feel. Mm -hmm. Fiber slows down the digestion of everything else that you eat with it. So the more fiber that's in your food, the longer it takes to digest. So the fuller you're going to feel. So if you're packing your meals full of high fiber foods and beans and like you said, the squash, things like that, you're going to stay fuller much longer. And that's going to keep people from eating, overeating for one, and two, eating things that you really shouldn't be eating. You know, that when you have a meal that's not very high in fiber, then you find yourself an hour later in the pantry. Right, yeah. And keeps you going, uh, you know, a little more regular to the restroom, um, which I think we all need. So. Yeah, we all need that. Americans do not get enough fiber. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. So yeah. we need to get that in there. Nice little tangent, but I think it is, uh, it is much needed information for the viewers out there. Oh, yeah, big time. Awesome. Cool. Okay, so I think we've covered how to not make your food taste like crap. Yep. Good stuff. Okay. So on the same line, I sent Chelsea this lovely question about chicken because whenever someone comes to me and they start wanting to lose weight or eat healthy, they're like, okay, do I have to eat chicken and broccoli every day? And I'm like, no, absolutely not. But then they get stuck eating chicken every day because chicken's obviously, I think, the most readily available meat in the grocery store. Uh, sometimes it's questionable too, but, you know, whatever. But most people buy chicken, and then the biggest thing I hear all the time is that my chicken tastes the same. All my chicken tastes the same. This is so boring. So I asked Chelsea to give us an idea of, of some really easy but quick ways to make your chicken not taste like crap. Yep. Yeah. Boom. Um, let me just start off by telling a nice little story about that. Mm -hmm. um, I have a roommate from uh, living in New York City. You know exactly who you are if you're going to be watching this. I love you, babe, but I always come down on her for this. She <laughs> there every night for dinner, she would boil her chicken in oh. water and just eat chicken with, you know, a big <clears throat> of ketchup, uh, you know, to add her, you know, flavor to the chicken and then eat exactly what you said, like some steamed broccoli on the side. And I would yeah. just sit there and just cringe. Um, so, yeah, that's just not fun for anybody. So, uh, you know, a couple recommendations I have are, you know, buying a whole chicken in the beginning of the week. Uh, first of all, you'll save money that way. You know, it mm -hmm. costs 
before to have the butcher take off all the fat for you buying that skinny chicken breast yes it's great you know it's good if you're looking for something quick uh, mm -hmm. but I think the most efficient thing to do is to buy a whole chicken breast in the beginning of the week um, I actually have a nice recipe on my blog for how to, you know, the perfectly roasted chicken. You roast it on, say, a Sunday or a Monday, whatever your food prep day is of the week, and you keep it in the refrigerator, and uh, and you kind of pull off of that chicken, and you throw it on top of a salad, a nice, like, fall mm -hmm. season salad throughout the week, and you got, uh, you know, mixing it up, you know, mixing up your meals, but adding good protein, so. Yeah, no, that's a, a really good point. That There's a couple things that you said that I think are good to kind of touch back on. One... What, whenever your food prep day is, is when you should be doing this. Yes. People, if you don't have a food prep day, you need to pick one. Yeah. You need to pick one. Not, and I'm not saying that you have to prep 100% of all of your food because that's not realistic either. You know what I mean? Like things change, schedules change. But there needs to be a day of the week where you sit down and say, okay, I'm going to go to the grocery store on X day and I'm going to get pretty much everything I need and then I'm going to come home and try to cook a lot of it. Because it just saves on time, and then it just keeps, like you said, you can cook a whole chicken in one day. Yep. You know, Sundays are usually the best food prep day, I tell people, especially right. right now, because no one goes anywhere on Sundays. Everyone's watching football. Yep. Throw the chicken in. <laughs> Put it the takes an hour to roast a chicken, honestly. That's it? That's it. That's it. Depending on the size of your chicken, if you have a bigger chicken, it might mm -hmm. take you know, an hour and 15 minutes, but yeah. honestly... Uh, you know, if you have a, a thermometer, you just kind of keep checking on it. But it, the average is about an hour. All I do is just buy, you know, a, I try to buy a good quality chicken, you know, mm -hmm. no pumped hormones in there, organic whenever possible, free range. Um, I'll rub it down, rub that chicken down with a little bit of olive oil. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, get, we're going there. Um, you know, put a little chopped rosemary, some parsley, a little bit of chopped garlic. Uh, you know, all that together, a little fresh cracked pepper, mm -hmm. even a little bit of salt. Don't be afraid of salt. Um, it really, um, you know, flavors your food and it helps keep your the moisture, it brings the moisture out of, out of your food and it, and it makes food taste good. So, uh, and all you do, pop it in the oven and, uh, and just keep checking on it. So, perfect. So, yeah. that is your chicken tip of the week. Chicken tip of the week. I also have a beer can roasted chicken which is on my 4th of July episode. Uh, that yeah. is a super fun one. Now, that takes a little bit longer, uh, but, man, that is so much fun for summer. Even now, into mm -hmm. the fall, uh, if you're, you know, if it's a nice day, throw that chicken on the grill. You can kind of forget about it for a little bit, and then uh, you've got nice crisp outside and then uh, moist inside. So, Yeah, and if anyone wants to get a good show, watch that 4th of July episode. Chelsea may or may not have on, like, Murica spandex pants and there's some sparklers involved there's some sparklers involved and maybe a little spread eagle Woo! yes there I oh yeah there was that so that's a good episode speaking yeah. of, of cooking an entire chicken yeah. yeah so if you need a visual check out that one yes yeah cool okay so now we all know how to cook our chicken it's funny because I think most people are afraid to buy the whole chicken mm. that's like the biggest thing I hear yeah and that's how that's how I feel sometimes. I, I, tr I think I do like half and half. Sometimes I'll buy the whole chicken. Sometimes I won't. But I'm the same way. I told you I just bought chicken thighs. Yeah. Uh, it, it can be intimidating looking at the whole chicken. You're like, what the hell am I gonna do with this? Uh, <laughs> but honestly, keeping it really simple, mm -hmm. uh, a few simple ingredients will make that chicken taste amaze balls. Um, and I mean, like I said, it's more cost efficient. If you don't want the skin on there, you take the skin off. You know. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Sweet. So I have one more question for Chelsea today, um, which kind of goes back to her like fitness side, right? So you and I both know that the more active you are, the more food you need to eat, right? And this is because body's burning off more energy. You need to support those metabolic activities and eat more food. But no one really wants to hear the science behind it, or at least when I try to tell them, they act like they're listening, but they're not. I know you're not listening, guys. And you know they're not listening. Yeah, but if you could give a very concise reason from a fitness aspect as to why people should be eating more food when they work out, what would it be? Um, yeah, my fiance and I were actually talking about this. He's uh, really into fitness. He's a sports medicine physician, Perfect. so uh, it's pretty cool actually because him and I kind of motivate each other. Um, 
you know, in regards to healthy eating and, you know, exercising. So that's something good. Have a, have a side note, have a little, you know, support and workout buddy. Mm -hmm. Um, but we were talking about basal metabolic rate today. Yeah. Um, you know, just talking about basal metabolic rate with my fiance. Just hanging out, chatting about your BMR. Right. Yeah. No doubt. Um, romantic, I know. Um, so basically what happens when you exercise, you're increasing your metabolism, which means what Brittany had said, your basal metabolic rate is going up. And that happens kind of over time. Um, so what you need to do is kind of counteract that and you need to be actually ingesting more calories because you're just going to feel lethargic. You're going to feel like crap. You're at a greater chance of injury uh, for your workouts if mm -hmm. you're not getting the proper nutrition um, to, uh, to fuel your body. Now, um, you know, there's a whole concept. I follow some people online. Uh, there's a physician I follow. He kind of talks about this like balance of if you're going to work out more then you need to eat more and then he also talks about all right if you want to scale it down and you want to you know cut your calories then you actually have to work out less does that make mm -hmm. sense yeah it makes total sense because I have clients who try to go like you know 180 at the gym and then they can't lose any weight and they don't understand why they're like I'm working out all the time I'm not losing any weight I don't understand and then you know, I'll convince them for a week to not go to the gym like a crazy person, maybe like three times instead of like seven. Right. And all of a sudden, they start losing weight. Yes. You know, and it's like you, you, you can't do both. Yep. You, have, you have to give your body a nice middle point. Yeah. What, what I actually like to do, um, some people kind of take this as a day in and day out thing where if you're going to, you know, work out your hard, hard workouts are – let's pretend like they're Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Mm -hmm. Then you get, as kind of a treat even, you get to eat a little bit more. I'm not talking Twinkies and chips no. and things that are empty calories. I'm talking whole grains, um, high quality protein, good quality fats. Uh, but you're ingesting more calories on those days. Um, and then, you know, on your, say, more low-key chill days of working out, whether it be a hike or um, a little jog or a walk or an easy bike ride, you're ingesting less calories in on those days. So you're kind of, you know, let's pretend like it's eating uh, interval training, mind, you know. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's a big thing I try to push to clients is that when they have those big, heavy workout days, I'm like, and you need to eat more food because what happens is if they don't, then the next day they're starving yes. and then they end up overeating the next day and they end up eating things like Twinkies. Right. You know, because nobody wants to eat, you know, five servings of rice when they could have ice cream or at least I wouldn't. Right. So, right. you know, but I think that's a really good point and I think that's an easy way for people to think about it is that your eating is like interval training. You're like eating intervals. Yes. <laughs> you know, yes. Days you're really active, eat a little bit more food. Days you're not quite as active, bump that down a tiny bit. Um, and then long term, that's going to help your body kind of catch up, and then you'll slowly start losing weight again. But yeah, I can, trying to preach to my clients. They know who they are when they're watching this. Mm -hmm. Trying to go to the gym seven days a week. Nobody Any wants to do that. Anybody got time for that? No. <laughs> no. But <laughs> well, speaking of. I was going to say, while I do take it as a day-to-day -day thing, mm -hmm. um, I also think of it as a concept. Um, and this is for people uh, that kind of plan things out in advance a lot more. I know mm -hmm. for me, I kind of go by seasons as well. Um, you know, in the wintertime, I really like to bump up my weight training uh, because, you know, you, you can't, unfortunately, you can't be outside. So mm -hmm. I'm doing heavy weight training, doing some sprints on the treadmill, um, and I'm definitely eating a lot more on, during those winter months, like, you know, hibernation, I guess as we call it. Yeah. Uh, in the summertime, uh, I don't think I'm burning quite as many calories. I'm doing more, you know, simple cardio workouts that aren't going to increase the basal metabolic rate a lot, but, you know, things as hiking, uh, easy bike rides, and so I just kind of try to eat less during the summertime. So, yeah. That's an example. Makes complete sense. Yeah. Nice. Well, thanks, Chels. So in the sake of time, I think we will wrap it up, right? But I um, wanted to thank you for coming on today because I love Chelsea. Um, check her out. What's your website? Shout uh, it out. www.figofresh.com. F-I-G-O-Fresh.com. Yeah. yeah, great website. Has a ton of awesome videos. Even if you don't want to get any cooking tips, watch them because I think they're funny. I just get a kick out of them. They're awesome. But I there are a lot of great tips. Get a kick out of my smells, not going to lie. Yeah, I love them.
So check her out. Obviously, check me out um, on point dash nutrition dot com. Um, all virtual weight loss. So if you want, you can jump on the bandwagon with both of us. Yeah. Jump on with Chelsea and jump on with me too. And uh, and maybe Penn State style, we'll have to bring in some shots and squats. I don't shots know. Shots and squats. Shots okay. and squats. We might we'll have to get on that. Yeah. But. Former episode, uh, mind you, but check that one out. So check that one out. Sweet. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Chelsea, for coming on today. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Uh, we will be back in two weeks. And two weeks, I'm going to have my man, Stephen, on. Uh, my, my first client ever. You yeah. know Stephen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Lost a ton of weight. Super active now. Looks like a whole new person. So he's going to be on kind of telling his story, which will be pretty cool. Um, so thanks, guys. Have a good week. And uh, see you next time. Bye.